It's like working, but it's not. It's so nice with the belly. I thought I did pretty good. Next time I want to chop my hair off, like stop me. But in terms of her size, her, the unfortunate part is that her. Oh, you want up? Okay. <laughs> Ew, Coley, don't put the cat's hair in your trunk. That's gross. Oh. <laughs> you help me cook lunch? Oh, are you gonna eat some of this with me? I'm gonna make rice. <laughs> you got your truck and your bus. You're good to go. Yep, we gotta put the rice in the pan. You wanna get down? Okay. It's over there. <laughs> chick it, chick it, chick it. Just trying to drop it, okay? Too bad. The tomato? Oh. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's cold, right? Is it cold? Apple. No, no, not apple. It's a tomato. Yeah, yeah silly. I'm gonna cut up these mushrooms. Little mushrooms. Mushroom. Nami, nami, nami. Yeah, they're not. They are nami, but you won't eat them, so I don't think you actually think that. The mushrooms have dirt on them. They're very dirty. You hear? Hear what? Nope. We're doing um, wooden spoon golfing. <laughs> Where's your ball? You gotta go get it. What? I'm not getting it. You get it. What? What do you need? <laughs> Are you pulling? <laughs> go. <laughs> get real. What do you need? This big lady. Oh, okay. Just casual risotto and steak for lunch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some for me. Some for Coley. Good? Good. <laughs> Almost done. So good. Hello, I'm vlogging today as <laughs> you can obviously tell I haven't vlogged since our little vacation but I have kind of like some updates and stuff to like share and show y'all first of which is that we like kind of switched up Cole's like schedule partially to help with his GSD and his blood sugar and just like how he's been eating, but also just to kind of like get him on a better, I don't know, a more like age appropriate <laughs> routine. He's going down for his nap now and it's it's actually closer to one o'clock. Um, so I, I didn't really stick to it <laughs> very well today. We kind of got carried away making lunch, but basically what we had been doing is he'd been napping around like 11, 11.30, having like a snack before that and then having lunch when he woke up. But a lot of times that would have us having lunch at like two, like 2.30 some days. Ugh, my allergies are all of a sudden back. I haven't had allergies in like two years and now all of a sudden I cannot breathe. But anyway, he takes like really big naps. A lot of times for like two and a half, three hours. So it was like starting to be too long for him to go without eating, especially with only having had like a snack before that. And then a little bit too late to have lunch. 
because then it would kind of like make him not really hungry for another snack and like dinner and like the schedule wasn't really working and I know a lot of kids like most kids his age nap in the afternoon like 12 30 1 o'clock 1 30 he just never seems like he can make it that long because he is so freaking tired in the mornings like he starts getting like so sleepy I feel like around like even like 9 30 10 but we're trying to like switch things around and make it make a little more sense especially with the new baby coming so we kind of flip-flopped it and now we're doing lunch first at like 11 30 12 and then trying to put him down by like 12 12 30 and so far it's like working but it's not he just like doesn't go right to sleep like he usually does on his like previous nap time like he is messing around in there right now so i don't know if he's overtired or like he's just adjusting we usually have to like pop in there and like lay him back down to like coax him to go to sleep so anyway we're like trying that out seeing how that's gonna go i have some things i wanted to show you all some like baby prep stuff i've kind of been going like ham baby prepping because i'm now 33 weeks which i look i feel like bigger <laughs> so much bigger than 33 weeks we're like getting there um i actually have kind of like an update um, based on my last appointment, so I'll tell you guys about that. But while I'm like looking at this, I figured I would show you. But da -da -da -da, this is not actually where it's gonna stay. We have the bassinet all set up. We like deep cleaned it. I washed all of the sheets and um, got the sheets on the mattress pad, and then stocked up underneath of it. So this is um, I have a vlog where I showed pretty much all of this stuff, so I can link that down below. I think that was like two vlogs ago, maybe three vlogs ago. Um, but I have my nursing caddy down here, my postpartum caddy which this will not actually stay here this will obviously like go in the bathroom when the time comes but just for now for storage purposes I put my postpartum caddy down there and then I have my manual breast pump back there and then that little bin there is just kind of like things that we're gonna need that are definitely gonna stay under the bassinet just like the things you need in the night like extra um, burp cloths and swaddles and swaddle blankets and uh, like a warm blanket just to like sit with her and passies extra um, clean crib sheets um, and then just like a backup of, of like a PJ and a onesie set we don't keep any like diapers or anything um, with the bassinet just because we don't do diaper changes in here we just go to their room since it's really not a far walk and then it doesn't like require whoever's still sleeping like they don't have to be you know awake and kept up if you need like light and all that kind of stuff so that's basically everything that we're gonna need for the bassinet and <laughs> the nighttime postpartum breastfeeding obviously like i said the postpartum basket will move and the nursing caddy like can move <laughs> it's just kind of like all there for now but the stuff in that basket will be there you know for good and then actually i'm like sitting here with these shoes on tell me what y'all think of these i actually mentioned this on my instagram i'm curious so these are i feel like they're like very trendy right now they're like those like clog you know mule kind of things that are just like super super chunky these like specific ones are from target i think they're like a dupe for a more expensive kind and they're just like plasticky like they're not anything like you know super fancy but they are so so comfortable and i personally think they're like really cute like really cute i feel like they're cute with a lot of things even honestly with like a casual outfit but i feel like with dresses with baggy jeans like with leggings i feel like you could do a lot with them and i've said this a million times but i have really big feet so for me the chunkier the shoe the better because i feel like it makes my feet look smaller <laughs> but let me know do y'all like this trend this style are we into it i'm pretty sure I'm into it. Um, speaking of, well, kind of speaking of <laughs> baby things, I'm gonna show y'all my like hospital bag, just kind of high level, um, because I started packing that stuff up. It's almost honestly ready to go, um, but I'm gonna be packing in some other stuff. And I've shown y'all before um, some products from Honeydew Intimates, which they have like the best, just like kind of PJ loungewear just super super comfy like things you want to hang out in at home kind of stuff i just had to go in there and like <laughs> lay him back down and it's all so so great this is not sponsored or anything but they did send this stuff over i've shown you guys stuff from them before and i do have a really good coupon code with them as well so i can link that down below along with these products they have so much cute stuff um but look at this i have this robe and then i have um, a pair of pjs i have been living <laughs> in this robe i literally slept in it last night like it's not even 
PJs, obviously. It's just a rope, but I literally slept in it because it's just so comfy, especially being this pregnant <laughs> right now. I just need stuff that's really comfy and like lightweight. And I think I might throw this in my hospital bag because it's literally perfect. It's a really pretty like brown, like taupey kind of color. It's a little bit ribbed, but it's like a crazy like bouncy stretchy material so it's like lightweight it doesn't make you hot or anything and it's just like the softest butteriest material ever it has obviously a tie string here and then actually has like an internal tie string to keep like you know everything tied together when you close it up i love it i sized all the way up to a size large just because i like everything i wear to be oversized but also um for the bump and stuff i just wanted to make sure I would have some room. I hope y'all can see the length. It's nice too with the length because it's not like long, long, but it's like got some length. You know, it covers your butt, covers you in the front. It's so nice with the belly and I love it. It is so, so stinging comfy. And then I also got like a pajama like set, which I will throw on to show y'all real quick. But I mean, like just look at these colors. <laughs> you can just tell this is fun. Here is the other set i might have to show you all this in the mirror so you can see the full length of it but how this comes as like a set oh i didn't tie and again i sized up to a large typically i'm like a small like pre-pregnancy um but i typically always get my clothes like comfy clothes in a medium so that they're like a size bigger than my normal size so they're like extra comfy so for being pregnant and kind of like postpartum and honestly I just like my clothes really big. I got these in a large and these are gonna be great for right now, postpartum and then normal life too. This is so stinking comfy. How cute is this like color block situation? It's got the yellow, this is my <laughs> sports bra. It's got the yellow like kind of on the edges and then the green and the pink and this like really cool gray and like this really lightweight long sleeve like it's not a sweatshirt or like a terry cloth or anything it's just like lightweight super super cozy again like a really kind of like stretchy bouncy but like super soft material and then here are the bottoms which again are like kind of color block right it does tie here's the belly situation for anyone that's curious if you don't like pregnant bellies i apologize but <laughs> this is what we're working with and honestly the size large in these like fits so well like there's honestly like <laughs> a lot of extra space here but what's nice is, is it is elasticy, but it also has the tie string so obviously like postpartum as my body's gonna be like all different shapes and sizes these will be perfect because they will kind of like fit all the different shapes and sizes of me and I'll be able to like tie them up but what I was kind of worried about which wasn't a problem last time so I shouldn't have worried about it but what I always worry about with like sets that come with pants is the length because I'm pretty tall I'm like 5'9 so a lot of things are like floods on me like they look a little silly because <laughs> they're just like not long enough but look at how nice and long these are they hit at like the perfect spot like right at my ankle and obviously they're like pulled up probably even higher than they would normally be just because <laughs> my belly is so big so these are going to be so perfect and this material again is nice and thin so it'll be good again for postpartum when i feel like you're just hot all the time and you like just don't want to have too much on you this is the perfect little set so thank you again to honeydew intimates for sending these over and like i said i have a coupon code so i will link that down below along with these products you guys can check them out they have so much good stuff last time i got a nightgown and a set of pjs and i wear them non-stop they also fit me super super pregnant like even with this size belly <laughs> they fit me so well they're so comfy so highly recommend and ken is calling me from downstairs hello okay just got unfortunately i can't keep that super <laughs> super comfy set on the rest of the day i wish i could it's a little too warm for that still we've had like a hint of fall weather here and there but nothing that has like stuck so it's a little too warm for that so i just threw on um one of my little like flowy little maternity t-shirts and my maternity bike shorts i freaking love these i can link these as well these bike shorts are from amazon and they're so comfy i'm definitely gonna still be wearing them like postpartum they're so comfy and they have like the whole entire like waistband which is really nice so just kind of like a like slightly cuter but still very comfy outfit and then i guess while i'm blabbering i have like a whole list of stuff i want to show you guys and i feel like none of the stuff i'm mentioning is actually on that list because i keep thinking of things i want to mention but i got some new jewelry i actually placed a really big victoria emerson order during their 
I don't even know if it was like Labor Day related, but during one of their sales. And I've never ordered for them before, but I had so many things I had my eye on and then everything went on such a good deal. So I'll probably do like in a separate vlog, I'll show you that new jewelry. But I got um, some new pieces from Ashlyn, um, which I also have a coupon code with them. I believe I can link all this down below and they did send this over as well. Again, not sponsored or anything like that, but I got some jewelry look at these earrings they're so cute i kind of wish i had showed you them before i put them in but they're like kind of tinier hoops and they have like i don't know like little pearls kind of dispersed in them and then they're just kind of like plain gold on the back but i love this size and i love the little kind of like early little mini pearl details so they're not like overly statementy but they're still so cute and then it's gonna be kind of hard to show because i've already worn all of this stuff but i love these earrings so so much i honestly love earrings that are just kind of like open because i feel like they look so fun in your ear like you can kind of see your earlobe through them but they're kind of like shiny they're tiny they're a little bit sparkly they're gold and they're so simple but again like a little bit more interesting than a normal stud these i also <laughs> wore the other day again they're like pretty simple they just they, they kind of are a stud but they just sort of have like these i don't know kind of like hoops there's like a bunch of little circles i love them again i i like earrings kind of like this and even the ones i'm wearing where they kind of dress up what you're wearing a little bit but they're not like big hoops or like kind of more dressy like statement earrings are kind of somewhere in between and i love that and then this necklace i honestly kind of feel like goes with these little earrings but it's just a gold necklace i think this is like called their sunburst or something like that necklace but how stunning is that it actually like spins which i think is so fun not that you'd probably actually do it but i think it's a fun like unique feature i've never seen a necklace that does that and i feel like this will catch the sun so well and be so so pretty like when you actually wear it and i just think the design is so cute it kind of looks like a sunflower and there's kind of like a back to it which is how it can spin i don't know if my camera is going to be able to focus yeah i feel like you can kind of see it there so pretty and i just love gold necklaces i can never have it okay now we are in the nursery <laughs> i feel like the other nursery because i kind of still consider my son's room a nursery too but this bag has her name on it, so I had to go ahead and turn that around. I showed this, again, like, very high level on Instagram, um, and I'm not gonna do, like, a super deep dive because I did, like, a super, super, super in-depth video um, last time I was pregnant with my hospital bag. Like, I'm pretty sure that video was, like, over 30 minutes long. Like, it was a lot, so I will link that down below. This is similar but just like a little bit like trimmed down i definitely brought i think just a little bit too much kind of in general but this isn't like a lot less individual things it's a lot less like repeats like i'm still bringing up pretty much the same stuff like i use the same list that i used last time because i had that typed up so i just printed it back out and i'm using it again so i'm using the same list that i did last time i'm just not bringing a ton of stuff like i feel like last time i brought like a lot of clothes for him and a lot of clothes for me and just like things like that like just too much unnecessary stuff whereas now i was just like a little more specific and i know since last time i was in the hospital for like five days it kind of worked out but i know this time i'm hopefully not going to be in the hospital that long since i'm not being induced and all that stuff so whether we do a c-section or not which i have an update on that I just know we'll hopefully only be there for, you know, like two-ish, three days. So I have a better idea now that I've done this once. <laughs> I know kind of like what we're going to need, how to pack in a way that like makes sense and how hopefully to avoid overpacking too much. But at the same time, I'm just an overpacker and I'm like okay with that. I don't try to be minimal. I just try to have what I need and what makes me feel prepared. And that's what this is. So it's definitely more than a lot of people bring still, but it's just a little bit less than last time so like i said i will link that down below um if you guys want to see like a full <laughs> like everything i brought last time but i'll just kind of like go over how i packed everything so i showed y'all a lot of this stuff um again in that previous vlog now it's just packed up but this is um the free people kind of like quilted purse tote bag kind of situation so this is going to kind of function as like i'm kind of calling it like my carry-on and it's gonna kind of be my purse i'm gonna throw my bum bag in here because it's big enough for that and then i'm just gonna keep like my water bottle and my book and my ipad and like the super relevant stuff that i want to have access to basically what i would keep in my purse or my carry-on like this camera of course my portable charger like stuff like that everything that i'm gonna want to like just have really easy 
access to, so this will kind of be like my purse. I already have like a folder in here. I have my Stanley that I'm gonna be bringing, so that's what that is. And then of course I have my Boppy that I'll be bringing. This is my base weekender bag. So I filled up this bottom portion, which obviously is like kind of separate, with like my makeup bag, my toiletry bag, camera equipment bag, and like my tech bag. So basically like all of my pouch type things I was able to fit down here. And I was super, super consolidated with that stuff. Like I literally put all of Ken and I's toiletries in like a one little tiny, tiny toiletry bag because we're like not gonna need a lot for the couple days we're there and they provide you with so much. So I like really, really was concise and that's why I could fit all of that in just this little tiny portion. And then in the actual bag, I have a packing cube with nursing bras and postpartum underwear and like my robe, my PJs, you know, all like the things you need to actually wear. Even though honestly, last time I just stayed in the hospital gown for most of it because I figured I might as well stain that <laughs> rather than my own clothes. And then I have a pouch of just kind of like some extra stuff like my little fan, a little tripod, my camera, like equipment. It's basically me stuff. There's my after band down there. So literally this only has like that pouch, this packing cube, and that's pretty much it. So that'll be stuff for me. Of course, I still have a little more clothes to pack, but for the most part, this is just kind of like the mom bag. And then this is her bag. Um, I put like some passies and stuff in like a little pouch that connects to it. That's her cord blood kit. And then in here is just the basic stuff, basically anything you need for like the baby. So clothes for her and swaddles and hats and her little like car seat blanket that has her name on it and her photo swaddle stuff and her name stuff for pictures and her little like announcement sign and burp cloths and just like everything baby related is in here. And then this um, duffel bag, which I got in my FabFitFun, obsessed. It's like the perfect size. This is just gonna be like food and snacks. So I literally already have like beef jerky and chips and like some hard candies, which are really good for when you're in labor. Treats and stuff for Ken. We're obviously gonna fill this up. We got some Gatorade that we're gonna throw in there and things like that. So this will be <laughs> strictly like the food and beverage bag. And then um, this bag I actually got last time I was pregnant that I used in the hospital last time as well. Those are Obviously my initials, not hers. And that bag is gonna be Ken's stuff, like Ken's clothes. And then also like everything else. Like right now I have my bigger bathrobe in there. I'm gonna put our pillowcases in there and um, like the blankets and stuff because Ken's gonna need a blanket. I like to have my own blanket. So that'll be Ken's clothes and then basically all the other random stuff. So I thought I did pretty good. I feel like even though this looks still like a lot of bags, you do still need a decent amount of stuff, especially if you wanna, you know, have like your creature comforts with you. I really feel like the snacks and the food is so important because last time <laughs> we didn't realize A, how long we were gonna be there, but B, how, you know, they don't obviously feed the husband, which we did know that, but like, it's just, you don't really wanna leave to like go get snacks or run and get food that much. So it is really nice to just bring stuff for yourself. So I'm pretty proud of this. We had like suitcases last time so just you know a couple duffel bags like this is basically the extent of like the bags also I can't fully show this because her name is on the top but I think I showed you guys a couple vlogs ago I was like sanding this down this was my rocking chair when I was a little baby and it used to have like a little um like plaque with my name on it but I took that off and sanded it down my brother had to like help us a ton because this was like a way bigger project than I thought it was but we finally finished getting it all sanded down and then my husband stained it and it looks so so, so good, it's so cute and little. Obviously super like nostalgic since it was mine and now it's gonna be hers. I mean, this is like 30 <laughs> plus years old, but I just think it's so cute and I feel like it came out really well, especially for being as old as it is. All right, I'm trying to dock you guys up in a spot that A has like okay-ish lighting and B also doesn't show anything with her name on it, which I don't think that it does. <laughs> you guys are literally sitting on the Ubi diaper pail right now but these are the things we have to do um so i figured also cole finally is asleep 30 plus minutes after i put him in the crib but <laughs> that's fine as long as we get it done <laughs> that's all that matters it's always kind of like random how long he's gonna nap too sometimes it'll be gigantic like three hours and then sometimes it'll be like an hour 15 hour and a half two it's all over the place but anyway first of all i straightened my hair for the first time in literally ages like i always style my hair I, I pretty much never leave it just like air dry i typically like wave it or curl it or put in a braid so it kind of gets crimpy or like has some texture to it i almost never straighten it but i kind of wanted to just have it fresh and easy and i never notice how long my hair is until i straighten it and then because i do it so infrequently i literally probably straighten it like 
once every like three or four months and so then i notice how long it is and i'm like dang my hair's got some length to it and of course when that happens i'm always like itching to chop it off but last time i did that i told ken i was like next time i want to chop my hair off like stop me i don't actually want to do it even if i say i want to do it and i think i want to do it like i don't want to do it but then like when the time comes i'm like no i do <laughs> but anyway I, I really hope this lighting is fine is that maybe like a tiny bit better because the window's this way um i figured i would give you guys a quick little just like chatty update for y'all just sit down and give you an update because we had my 32 week ob appointment last week and i actually i think i mentioned this in a previous vlog but since we're still like trying to decide whether i'm going to do a v-back well if i'm even gonna like attempt a v-back versus just scheduling another c-section pretty much that whole decision rides on how big she is because with cole i i have obviously a whole entire video of like the labor and delivery and the madness that that was but that labor and delivery was horrendous and extremely horrific and traumatizing and it was it was not a good situation so i just very much want to avoid having a repeat so pretty much everything is going to ride on what size she is because cole a was huge he was like almost 10 pounds and his head was just so big that he got literally stuck like his head just was not going to make it out the good thing was he was he did great the whole time like he was never in distress he just he wasn't going to make it out with <laughs> the size his head was and the size that i was so the goal is to attempt to be back if she is of a reasonable size where i'm not just going to put myself in the same situation where i'm going to be pushing for hours and it's not going to go anywhere and then we have to do a c-section so as of right now i requested an ultrasound early because typically which is weird last time i was high risk because we did ivf so i got so many ultrasounds and i feel like i was constantly getting to like check on the baby and see the baby and because i'm not high risk this time it's weird you literally only see the baby like you know when they do the initial like transvaginal ultrasound and then you're like anatomy scan and then on again to like 36 ish you know weeks so you like don't get any ultrasound so i was like listen i, I feel like i can't wait until i'm 36 weeks to decide or even have like a general idea if a VBAC is even an option. I just feel like that's too long to wait to get at least a sense for how big she is. So I asked my doctor and she was like, yeah, we can definitely do like kind of an early like growth scan essentially. We did that last week at my 32 week appointment and it was so cool because we got to see her again. And of course she's like so much different than they are at 20 weeks. You know, they're like they're 20 weeks to 32, almost 33 weeks. Like they're so much bigger. They're so much more like active. They're just doing so many more things. So it was so cool to see. You could like see her lips at one point she um her position right now she is head down which is very exciting she's like in birth position which is like one thing checked off you know like if she was breech or a uh, transverse or whatever like obviously that would affect the chances of doing a v back but at least she's head down um and she was kind of like facing that way um so like she was kind of looking over here and her back is kind of like rounded around this way so like her like arms and feet are kind of like over here but at one point she kind of reached her arm back like kind of near where her butt was her like we got like kind of a good head on of her face and she was just like kind of moving her lips and like sort of sticking her tongue out it was so so cute to see we got some like footage but we it's like from kind of far away so it's not really the best for like looking back on but it was so so cute in terms of her size i can um show you all a couple of pictures from the ultrasound as well we got some cute pictures we got some of her hair she definitely has like some visible hair which i'm convinced it's gonna be dark like mine and well ken's hair is like the same color but i'm convinced it's gonna be dark hair for no reason i've just <laughs> that's just what my head thinks but in terms of her size her the unfortunate part is that her head is still running very big. I think I just have it in my family. Like my dad has a really big head. I have a really big head. I think I just have babies with big heads. Her circumference um, is in the 90 like first percentile. And then I think the diameter was in like the 96th percentile. So homegirl's head is large. However, the, the good thing and the redeeming thing is she's in like the 58th percentile for size. So even though her head is on the bigger side, she's still a pretty average size baby. Obviously the ultrasounds is like a very, very rough estimate, but they were estimating that she's about four pounds, 14 ounces. So just shy of five pounds, which is literally like right on track for basically how big she should be. Like she's not large, but she's not tiny. Like she's super, super like on the money. So that's reassuring and my doctor basically said like yeah the head size is important but really we want to mostly just go off of her general size cole was 
in like the 75th percentile for size and then having a big head on top of just being a big baby makes obviously everything bigger so if she's a normal size but just with a big head it'll still be smaller head like a smaller head than Cole's was so then we still have a shot so it's definitely like VBAC is definitely still on the table in terms of what we've learned so far it's just not like super super helpful information for making an ultimate decision because obviously they can grow a lot in these next she's moving like crazy right now <laughs> they can grow a lot in these next couple of weeks like this is kind of when they start having a bit of a growth spurt and you know they definitely continue gaining weight and all of these things so my next ultrasound at 36 weeks which will basically be like a month in between we could see a much bigger baby she could continue on like the same trajectory and still be kind of average size but with a big head so we can't really make a decision for sure but what uh, my doctor recommended she's like we can just schedule your c-section and then you can always cancel it and that might be easier just kind of like get on the schedule and kind of like reserve your spot essentially and then obviously if you go into labor or you decide you want to wait and go into labor um then we can cancel it so we schedule for 39 in my 39th week so we have that on the schedule which is kind of crazy i might not have a c-section but it is nice to know and there is such a like upside to having it's scheduled because then literally we could have like my in-laws like we they would know what time they need to like show up we would know what time we're going to the hospital around what time she's gonna be born ken can make sure he can like come home and like check on cole and help with his you know cornstarch milk and all his stuff for dinner and then we would know what day we're leaving i think we'd be checking in on like a wednesday and then we'd be leaving on friday like around lunchtime so we wouldn't be there you know for ages so anyway it would be nice <laughs> to kind of do it that way just for the convenience factor but obviously i would rather not just continue having like a million c-sections in my life so that's basically where we're at it was so fun to have the ultrasound and just get to see her again but i also feel like we got a lot of good information from it which was the main point of it oh i just looked at my notes she is measuring um like a week and a half ahead in terms of um like size but her head is measuring like three weeks ahead um, as far as like pregnancy goes, I actually had my first like Charlie horse in the middle of the night, which I've never had before in my life. I don't think I don't think I had that with Cole either. So that was uncomfortable. I'm honestly just getting uncomfortable at this point. Like I'm so big. I know I still have a long time to go, but like my belly just like hurts sometimes. Like just it feels so stretched out. I just feel so heavy. I'm just feeling extremely pregnant and these allergies are like kicking my butt right now. As much as I love being pregnant and I really enjoy my pregnancies and I'm so thankful to have such like fairly like easy like uneventful which is good pregnancies i think um you know i have if i actually have the c-section i'll have you know six and a half weeks left i think when that time comes i'm gonna be <laughs> kind of ready to not be pregnant and obviously we're so stinking excited to meet her to have her like everything is like ready like literally yesterday i actually have to do that once i'm done sitting here yesterday we got down all of the things like the bouncer seat the swing the baby bathtubs the travel bassinet the like tummy time mats the dock tot like all of the like kind of accessory type things we got those down and i'm starting to like process through them they're out in the hallway i need to kind of like go through them clean them sort them out put them where they're gonna go we've already like cleaned all her clothes all of her toys there's like very few things left to do besides the stuff that you have to wait to do like cleaning the pacifiers and like sterilizing them sterilizing the bottles i'm not gonna like set up her swing yet or anything we haven't put the car seat in the car but it's just like those last minute things like that's all that's left so things are going very well things with cole and his diagnosis and his blood sugar and all that have been kind of hit and go lately we've actually kind of like we're in a better groove now but uh, he's getting his molars in his um he's got like this one and this one that have popped through right now his two-year molars and i think that's what was affecting like the fluctuation so much because i looked it up and like growth spurts which i also think he might be having and then teething all those different kinds of things can affect your blood sugar but he seems to be like much more stable now in terms of like the consistency like he used to be so i think we're through that situation but he does have his um biannual like imaging and blood work for his liver and all that kind of stuff coming up honestly in like a couple weeks in like 
two weeks. That's a little nerve wracking, but obviously also good. We want to obviously get him checked and monitored and all those things like as often as we can. That's kind of what's going on with him. Um, but what I actually did do, I posted a reel. So I'll insert that here just like as I'm kind of talking of a little project, a little like, kind of crafty project that I recently did because I was kind of thinking and I honestly like thought of this idea myself. Like I didn't see it anywhere. I'm sure other people have done something like this. I just kind of came up with it because I was thinking about how once the baby here like at least like last time like our lives kind of stopped and just everything was like changing diapers and feeding the baby and trying to get sleep and that was literally it and obviously now that we have a toddler our life can't just stop when we have a new baby we still have to obviously take care of him but also like he is not gonna want to just do nothing and so we still have to now account for a toddler along with living the newborn life which of course we've never done before so I was thinking of like ways that we can still make sure that we're making his life fun and him still getting to like do fun things and have a good time and then also still get to like spend quality time with him where it's not just like all of us on the couch like watching something and just sitting with the baby like things that are going to be fun and engaging for him and we want to still be able to you know have those kind of things for him to enjoy and then also get to each like spend one-on-one -on -one time with him and just have quality time with him like if she's napping so what i decided to put together like i said i'll put the reel on the screen here is like a little activity stick jar and it's super simple and like super super inexpensive but i thought it would be a good way to like have a whole bunch of ideas like a ton of ideas I, I racked my brain to come up with a list of things that Cole specifically and then just kind of two-year-olds in general really like to do and I just got a mason jar and I got some Mod Podge and some tissue paper and some popsicle sticks at Michael's and like some little sticky letters and I made the jar kind of like cute and I put some Mod Podge in it and just lined it with tissue paper just so it wouldn't be like clear and you just see the sticks through it like that's kind of boring but you could totally do that with like glitter like put Mod Podge on the inside and then just like roll a bunch of glitter around or you can use newspaper or anything like that and then I just put like little letters on it that said activity sticks just to, like label it and make it kind of cute and then I got kind of like the big fat like long popsicle sticks and at like the very end of each one so you wouldn't know what they say on the front and the back just because I, I didn't want to have like a thousand of them I figured it would make more sense to have two activities per stick and then you can pick whichever one you like more or do both or whatever but they're at the very bottom so you can like kind of pick a stick and it'll kind of be like a surprise what you pick out and obviously some of them are outdoor and some of them are indoor so not all of them would apply 24 7 a couple of them are like going to the pool and going to the playground and obviously if it's like january and freezing cold that wouldn't work so it kind of depends but a lot of them are super simple they're like doing painting or doing stickers or stamps or coloring like kind of crafty or doing like his kinetic sand or building with blocks or making a four like I just thought of a whole bunch of random things some are like super low maintenance and some are like going places and doing things like out of the house and kind of more like adventures and stuff some of them are like treats like going to get a little something so I, I kind of did like a mix of indoor outdoor and kind of easy low maintenance and then a little bit more not extravagant but things that take a little bit more effort and just put those on a bunch of popsicle sticks and then I figure whenever Cole is seeming bored or we're seeming bored or honestly I feel like the main thing will be like we're just not gonna have the bandwidth to try to like get creative and be like oh what should we do with Cole or like what would Cole want to do right now we can kind of take the guesswork out of it and also kind of like make it a fun surprise and maybe he'll get into it too where he like picks a stick out and we'll like get to be excited about what pops up up rather than having to actually think about it it'll just take the thought out and make it like a fun little surprise and almost like a little game I put that together I thought that would be a cute kind of like postpartum thing not for me but like in the postpartum period when we're kind of adjusting to having like two kids it could be just like a fun way to still get to spend a lot of time with Cole and kind of make it like a little bit of an interactive fun way to like think of things to do and then we can like set aside specific time however long it is a half hour an hour or whatever you know the outing is and just like spend that time with him whether it's all of us together and we bring her or just one of us with him or something like that so yeah I wanted to mention that idea just in case y'all are pregnant or or honestly you would like could do this idea whether you're pregnant or not if you just want to have a fun way to like think of little activities to do with your toddler and you don't want to have to think <laughs> about them or you want to kind of make it fun it's just like a fun little activity you could do if you have little ones and I feel like you can add to it too as I get older you know like once he learns to ride a bike we can put like go bike riding or you know things like that that he will start enjoying once he can like go on the kayak with Ken we could put that on the list like things as he grows this could be kind of like a fun family thing that you could do with all your kiddos so 
yeah i wanted to share that and just mention it because it was a fun thing to like create like it was fun for me to do kind of like a crafty little moment but also i think it'll be very handy and very useful so that is everything for this vlog i'm sure this was a ton of footage even though i've only started this vlog not that long ago there was like again like specific things i feel like when i don't vlog for a little while i then all of a sudden i'm like oh my gosh i haven't shown this i haven't updated this i haven't told them this i haven't shared this and then i have a whole bunch of stuff and i just dump it all out into a vlog to update you guys so i hope that you guys enjoyed thank you so much for watching if you would like to subscribe would love to have you we have so much fun here and until next time i'll see y'all in our next video bye guys